Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to acknowledge a bit of the obvious and then talk about more or less public health. Because when the topic of stray cats and disease enters the frame, the natural interest involves how cats, stray cats, how they impact the community, and if diseases carried by such felines can bring harm to us. Let me first start off by saying that feline to human transmission of any disease is rare. Toxoplasmosis roundworm, and cat scratch disease are often considered the big three, but transmission that results in human illness is not common. The cool reason for this is that actual contact between a person and a stray or feral cat is rather uncommon. Additionally, many diseases that could impact humans involve direct contact with feline waste, which is quite obviously very rare. And let me state, just so there is no confusion, I'm not talking about a cat within your neighborhood that has a home but just strolls around. I'm talking about cats that have been abandoned or have always lived off the land. Most of these cats, direct contact as in physical touch, is not common. In fact, cats that live off the land are often afraid of humans and approaching isn't normally in the cards. If any attempt at contact is initiated, it's often by the person, not the cat. In summary, with respect to stray and feral cats, there's not a lot of evidence at work that would indicate that cats that live off the land pose a great threat to the public as a whole, regardless of the location. Cats, stray and otherwise, are far more likely to spread disease to each other. So, while stray cats can carry a host of diseases, as would likely be expected, most of these diseases pose no threat to the human population. In fact, strangers that you engage with in the public space pose a much greater threat than any cat that you've seen hanging out behind a dumpster. If you're getting sick today, it'll be due to random folks rubbing elbows with you at a shopping center. Odds are incredibly slim that your illness will come from a feline. And before I close things out today, I'll briefly address what is somewhat of a common narrative that is often expressed when talking about animals in the wild, and that's rabies. Stray cats and rabies, feral felines and rabies. Once again, the odds of contracting rabies from a stray cat are incredibly low you're much more likely to be infected by a bat or a raccoon. And let's not ignore the lack of close physical contact that I noted earlier. The chances of a cat on the street just jumping up and biting you at random is unlikely. And it's all the more unlikely that such a cat would also be a carrier of rabies. With all of that said, if a stray or a feral cat is roaming around, it's best to just leave it alone. Don't be in a rush to walk over and attempt to pet it. And once again, I'm not talking about that familiar cat in the neighborhood that has a home. I'm talking about the cat that's made its life in the woods or on the streets. Let that cat do its thing and you do yours. As long as you're responsible and respectful, even the smallest odds of becoming infected by a stray cat will be erased. No physical contact, no chance. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as a part of the Senior Cat Wellness family. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.